Anybody that be complaining over the longer videos, oh, you're really going to be upset about this one because we got so much to talk about. And what was the most highly anticipated press conference from the Ravens? Maybe ever, or not even ever, but in a very long time, at least for me personally. Whew, Harbaugh sure had a lot to say. And just to get straight to the Greg Roman part, because I know that's what everybody wants to hear about first and foremost, Greg Roman. Because y'all know, we don't talk about G-Ro, no, no, no. But this time we do, because this is how it started with the Greg Roman part, because Harbaugh... I, and you know Harbaugh, Harbaugh must have been real good in high school and stuff at dodgeball because the way that sometimes Harbaugh be moving out the way for these questions and dodging them, oh yeah, he, he's good at that. But they didn't let him. So I forgot who originally asked it. I'm not sure if it was Jeff Zrebic or not, but he asked him about Greg Roman and Harbaugh said it's his responsibility to build the staff for his vision. And he said it's important that he sees what everybody thinks as well, like the, the media guys and stuff too. Um, but he said that we have a great thing going. And he said it's his job to make the decisions when it comes to moving on and keeping the same people. So that continued to confirm something that we've already said. A lot of people have already known. This is why I continue to say, do not, do not discount fans with stuff that they know. Plenty of people have said over time, it's Harbaugh that chooses the staff. It's him that chooses the offensive, defensive coordinator. Him that chooses the, the hiring, the firing, all that good stuff. But anyway, so he said that. So it was kind of a, an answer that really didn't give any details, anything like that. So Jeff Zrebig said, hold up there, Hobbs. He ain't say it like that, of course. But he said, is it a lock that Greg Roman will be back? Is it a lock? Because that's what everybody wants to know. That's been a topic of conversation amongst so many Ravens fans over the past couple of months, couple of years, couple of everything. Is it a lock? Harbaugh said, nothing is a lock. And he said that he plans on Greg Roman being back, though. He said that Greg plans on being back as well. But he said it's still early, though. Now, with that part right there, to me, let me know if y'all got anything different from it. But to me, that didn't really scream Greg Roman is completely safe. It didn't to me. It didn't scream out, oh yeah, Greg Roman is for sure going to be here this year and for the entirety of this year. It didn't scream out to me, Greg Roman is in our long-term plans. It didn't scream out to me, oh, Greg Roman is going to be here for the foreseeable future. It just really didn't scream that to me. At all, because if you see the, the wording that he used in the way that he used it, it sound like Greg Roman may be sort of on a, a sort of hot seat as well himself. And it sounded like hopefully this ends up being the case, but it sounds like they may really be holding Greg Roman accountable extra right now. So we'll see what continues to be developed. But let's see what he also said about one Greg Roman. He said, we've done some things offensively, uh, but we did see this is where this was probably my favorite part of about the press conference. Because we know Har Harbaugh, he, he said some stuff today. Because I know there's a lot of people out there that say, oh, man, Harbaugh is talking for 44 minutes and he said a whole lot of nothing. I disagree. I disagree. This might have been my favorite John Harbaugh press conference maybe ever. Ever. Well, let's get back to what he was saying. He said, uh, we've done some things offensively, but didn't do enough converting yards into points. And when he said that, I was like, hold up, Harbaugh. Are you about to be straight up about the condition of the offense this year? So then he continued. He said he, he brought out that they were six best in yards because so many people have been flaunting that. Hey, Ravens fans, why do you want to get rid of Greg Roman? This team was six best in yards. Why do you guys want to let Giro go? This team was six best in yards. But I remember when I myself, I looked it up. I went to ESPN.com one day. I said, oh, we were high in yards. Let me see what we were in points. So ESPN, they don't list it by number. They just list all the teams in order. So I put it in order by points, and I counted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 in points? What? That's not good enough. Now, we know there were injuries, but still, there were plenty of opportunities to adjust to what the injuries were. And we don't expect anybody to go out there and be Lamar Jackson. We know that. We know that. But Ravens had their chances. Anyway, this is why I appreciated so much 
when Harbaugh brought that up, that we were sixth best in yards, but 17th in points. And when he said 17th, I was saying 17th out loud at the same time. I was like, yes, speak on it. Please do. But anyway, he said we get two to three first downs and then we'd punt. Said they could be called empty yards or yards that didn't turn into points. And I was like, Hobbs, is, it, is that you? Is that you? And then he also said that field goals are okay, but touchdowns are better. Now, that may sound so simple because it is and it's true, but for, for that to come from John Harbaugh, Especially when he, I'm sure he hears plenty of the criticism and all that about his offensive coordinator, Greg Roman. For him to say something like that was still a little bit surprising to me. So um, he also said that uh, in the first half of the season, they were tops of the league in big plays. But the second half, they, they just didn't have that. And of course, we know what the biggest equation with that was. Lamar Jackson was out. Um, he also said that our called run game wasn't as good this year. And he said that didn't have the explosive plays in the run game. Now, he did say statistically they were in the top when it came to the run game. But most of that came from Lamar Jackson. And he said some Tyler Huntley, too. He said they had too many sacks and hurries. Said they had too many pre-snap penalties. Said guys weren't lining up the right way. He also brought up how you can gain yards. But when you have the penalties, you have to make up for lost yards. And he said that they have to choose their scheme direction wisely. See, when a lot of words that he said to me, it really let me know that Giro is really not safe. Th that's what it told because he said he said all this stuff that he said to me. It told me that Giro is not safe. But anyway, he also talked about how over the next couple of weeks, they're going to do a deep dive into the scheme. Um, and one thing that was interesting at this last part of the Giro part he says they know who their quarterback is, but he didn't name any names on that part. Now, later on, he did mention Lamar Jackson, but on that part where he was talking about Giro, he said, we know who our quarterback is, but didn't come out and say, oh, Lamar Jackson. So that was kind of weird. And I know that Harbaugh is not the contract guru. We know with EDC, that's a question more posed for him. But something that we also noticed in this presser is that Harbaugh did not once bring up the Lamar Jackson contract. But at the same time, I don't think anybody even asked about it. But that would be more so toward EDC anyway. So we got to wait for Friday for that one. But anyway, let's go back to the beginning of the press conference. We, we had to talk about the Giro part first. because I know that's what everybody wants to hear about is Mr. Gregory Roman. Anyway, um, in the beginning of the press conference, he thanked the media. He said it's been a tough two years uh, and he thanked them for sticking with the Ravens. And he said he appreciated the media for being there. And he thanked the fans also for showing up to the games. He said that him and his wife, they even went on a vacation in Arizona. Uh, for, but he ended up running into Ravens fans. So he said Ravens fans. He said they might not have the biggest fan base, which they don't. Um, but he said they are everywhere, which they are. So that was cool. Um, now, the first question that he was asked was there a setback with Lamar um, as far as his injury? And Harb said there wasn't ever a setback. They had hoped for the best. He said Lamar even thought he would be back. He said the first week he was out, he was like, all right, coach, I'm going to be back. And then the second week he was like, hey, I, I, I want to play, but it just didn't end up happening. Uh, he said he worked at being back, but the, the bone bruise never really healed. Um, said that Lamar was still in the boot and limping toward the end of the season. But he said that, that Lamar Jackson is going to start working again the day after the Super Bowl. So I think the Super Bowl is like February 12th, 13th, 14th. I forget when it is. Uh, but anyway, Lamar Jackson should be back in action soon. Well, obviously not in action till like August, September, but be back working soon. But that's the expectation. We'll see if it happens. Anyway, he said uh, he looks forward to getting guys back on defense. Um, he gets two first round corners back. So that should help a lot with obviously with Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters. Um, he said he was excited about uh, the coaching staff going forward, said they have some great coaches, said that Don Wink Martindale is a proven coach and a great guy. He said it was just time. It was just time. Um, he also talked and um, Jeff Zrebic did clear it up on Twitter. So I was wrong. He said that Wink did not get fired. Um, he cleared it up and, and, and he just gave a, a whole explanation of it on Twitter. So y'all check that out. But basically the Ravens, they offered Wink. He said it was a deal that would be more so on their terms and not Wink's terms. So it would almost be like the Ravens, they would have control over what happens with Wink rather than Wink having control over what happens with Wink. 
So if that makes anything clear. Anyway, um, he said that he was excited about Mike McDonald um, and that they're still putting their staff together. And he said that's the great thing about uh, continuity, that when it comes that when it comes to the standard on defense, uh, he said it's not just something that you want to start over on, but it's something that you want to build on. And I can see why he would say that, because it's not like the Ravens have had these bad defenses with the guys that they promoted from within. But they they still needed that philosophy change. Will Mike McDonald bring that? Hey, let's see. Let's see. Because he obviously has had guys that he's been under uh, both a Dean Pease and a Wink Martindale. And hopefully, like we're saying, he can take from them things that they were successful at and build off of that and things that they weren't successful at and build off of that. Just take this opportunity to build. I really, Ravens had me fooled. I thought they were going to really go in a different direction than they have, had usually been going when it came to uh, defensive coordinators and looking for somebody on the outside. But they said, no, 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 no. We're going to stick to our roots. And, and they're, for that part, their roots have been working for the most part. They've been working. So it is what it is. Um, he was also asked about how much injuries impacted this season. And that's a great question. He said injuries happen to every team. This year, they just got smashed with him. Uh, he said you can say it's bad luck or a fluke, but he also said that they have to look at every possible avenue to make sure this doesn't happen again. And I'm sure so many people that have been calling for Steve Saunders' job uh, and the, the, all the strength and conditioning and performance, all, the, all that, that whole team, a lot of them appreciated this. Now, with Harbaugh, one thing to keep in mind with this entire presser, with literally everything that he said, because I appreciated so much stuff that he said, but it's about action. It's about action. Because you, you can literally say all the right things in the world, but it's about action. How are you going to back it up? How are you going to deliver on your word? So we'll see what the follow-up is with Harbaugh and just really this whole Ravens team moving forward. Uh, but he did say a lot of the right things today and some other things. Well, let's just keep going. Um, he did talk about how he met with the performance staff for four hours the other day. And they went over everything that they can do to improve that. Said that they're going to change a lot. He said, you don't make change for change's sake, but you got to make changes when necessary. And one of my favorite parts of the whole press conference. He said, change is inevitable and growth is required. He said, they aren't going to just take it and say, oh, it's okay. Said they are going to get it fixed. And that is so important that the Ravens get it fixed. Because there was a lot of little things around the Ravens. That are broken and before you can really tack on the big stuff and address the big stuff you got to fix the little stuff first you have to and obviously injuries were a big part of what happened to the Ravens this season and really derailed a lot of their plans so he was also asked about guys coming back fully healthy like hey like as far as Ronnie Stanley Nick Boyle and he said that it was a big surprise with some of those guys that didn't come back all the way he said, well, Ronnie Stanley, it's like you get him back in training camp and then boom, he's out for the whole season. And then with Nick Boyle, he said, Nick Boyle, and this is something that we said too. And I mean, anybody who watched Nick Boyle, you could tell, he said that Nick Boyle was never fully back. He was never fully healthy. And when you looked at Nick Boyle play, you could tell that he definitely wasn't. Um, he was also asked about Tyus Bowser. And he did confirm that he tore his Achilles and the surgery went well. But he said that, don't, don't they say that after every surgery, that it went well? I'm like, well, oh, well, you, you got a very good point there. But not after Nick Boyle's because Nick Boyle had the initial surgery, but then he had to get the cleanup surgery right after that. But anyway, uh, but no, you know what? But they did say that Nick Boyle's originally, original surgery went well. So, Harbaugh, you're right. One, one for you, zero for me. Anyway, um, he asked if anybody – oh, he was asked if anybody else was having off-season surgery – he said he didn't think so, but there was one person that he had forgot about and he couldn't bring it to his mind. And he was like, ah, do you guys remember? And I was at home screaming. Out, I said, Derek Wolf, Derek Wolf, Derek Wolf. Then somebody in the media said Derek Wolf. And I was like, ah, yeah, that's the one. Uh, but he did have that hip surgery. So we'll see what happens with him. Um, I think it was Jameson Hensley that talked about the, the reports or that John Harbaugh's extension is for four years. Um, and he, so, somebody asked, what was Bashadi's message to you when it comes to your uh, expected extension? Um, and he said that he hasn't really thought much about it. Yeah, right. Huh? You, you know that was on your mind, man. You already know that. We know that. We, and, and it's like, oh, I wasn't thinking about the contract. I'm not worried about the contract. We know you think about that money, man. Like, even when, when Lamar be saying that, oh, I ain't worried about no contract. Lamar, we know you want to get paid too, big dog. It's okay. But I know um, 
people don't want to seem like they are uh, mo mo motivated by money necessarily uh, because that could sort of take away uh, their fan fans perspective of them. Oh, you're only doing it for the money. I mean, it is their job, though. Do you work for free? So I wouldn't be mad at anybody. Say, oh, yeah, I'm trying to get that contract. OK, no problem with me. But that's just me. Anyway. Uh, he said he hasn't thought much about it. Said his focus is what they need to do to get better. He said he appreciates and is grateful for the people in the building. Said Bashadi is a great boss. And he said if the Ravens want him still, then he still wants to be here. Of course he's a great boss. I mean, he, pay, he the one paying his salary. Yeah, he's a great boss. Of course. But anyway. Oh, hey, y'all. He was also asked, did you see anything from Lamar Jackson's play that will make you change the way uh, to sort of build around him? Uh, and he said it's the same idea. Said Lamar's determined and said as a coaching staff and, and scouting staff, they have to do their part. And then, of course, all the other players have to do their part as well. Um, now, this is where the, uh, the press conference took a little bit of a turn. Because this is where stuff, I mean, he said some stuff earlier, but here's where he turned it up a notch and started calling some people out indirectly. Of course, you know, you don't, you don't really mention any names. But anyway. He said that uh, he always felt like the Ravens had a chance to win in the final stretch of the season. You know, those like, like those last six games. Yeah, you know how those went. But um, he said the guys, they, they played, fought, and worked hard. He said there was no lack of effort at all. But he said, this is, this is where it was. He said defensively, they didn't get off the field enough in the fourth quarter. And he said that that happened not only at the end of the season, but he said that was a problem for them throughout the whole season. That was for Wink. That was for Wink, straight up. He talked about with G-Row earlier. He talked about, hey, we six in total yards, but 17th in points. It's not good enough. That's for G-Row. Hey, we, we were right there. We had opportunities to win, but, man, our defense just could not get off the field in the fourth quarter, and that happened throughout the whole season. That's for Wink. Anyway, um, he said they didn't do enough down the stretch when it came to making plays, and he said they have to put guys into position to make a play. Uh, he said there was a lot of effort from all the players and said that with experience, let's see how they grow. And he also talked about let's see what they do this offseason and, and let's see if they come back better than they were before. Now, this was a really good question. Somebody asked, why was the blitzing such a struggle to deal with and why couldn't you adjust to it? And he said the, the Miami game and the first Cincinnati game, they got us straight up. They, they got us. He said. Uh, but then this is where, okay, he mentioned Giro earlier. He mentioned Wink earlier. And this is where it was players. Because, let's just read it first. He said, uh, sometimes there was a wrong route that was run. Uh, he said, sometimes the protection didn't hold up. Uh, he said, sometimes guys got rubbed off of their route. He said, it was all on execution. He said that straight up. So, execution, that means the players... They weren't doing their job. They weren't doing a good enough job. So how about that? Hey, that, that wasn't on us. That wasn't coaching. That was execution. And this was a follow-up to that. He said they ended up dedicating 5 to 7% of their practice time to zero blitz after that Miami game. So that Miami game had Ravens shook. They were like, whoa, where did that come from? So, so they dedicated a portion of their practice just to the zero blitz after the Miami game. Harbaugh came out and said that. And I appreciated that. I appreciated that. And he said they have to get better at beating the blitz with base plays. And he said it's been a priority. This And this is the kicker right here. Again, back to the players. Oh, but, oh not, not us coaches. That's players' fault. He said it's been a priority, but it has to show up on the field. <laughs> Who shows up on the field? The guys wearing the jerseys. Not the guys wearing the hoodies and the zip-up jackets. And Oh, that's me. Okay, yeah, I don't show up on the field. But anyway, the coaches. They not on the field. That's the players. Oh, and then this part. Oh, this was one of my favorites, too. Because y'all know we had some fun, colorful conversations about those two-point conversions. Oh, man. Y'all know how I felt about them two-point conversions. Anyway, uh, somebody asked, did the two-point conversion plays cost the team a chance at the postseason? Now, you know my answer. Oh, yes, 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 and yes. And so many people's argument was, oh, but we don't got the players to ride, to go against these teams in, in, the, uh, in overtime. What if we don't get the ball back in overtime? You take that chance. You play for overtime. Go for it. 
Because in overtime, all right, if your defense doesn't make a stop, okay. If your offense doesn't get a touchdown, okay, that's that. But here with these two-point conversions, that's it. Like, that, that's, that's the end of the game right there in regulation. You save yourself an extra five, six, seven, ten minutes in overtime that you don't have to go through, but that's it. And in some games, even if they would have got the two, like in the Packers game, Packers still had time to move down the field. So that if they would have even got that two-point conversion, that would have not even necessarily been the end-all, be-all. But anyway, they asked him, did the two-point conversion players cost the team a chance in the postseason? He said, you know how the players felt about it. So I, referring back to, remember that, the, the coincidental cameras that just so happened to be on John Harbaugh, and he just so happened to be mic'd up uh, for that moment, that two-point conversion moment. And when he asked all the players, hey, do you want to go for it? You want to go for it? You want to go for it? And they say, yeah, oh yeah, we want to go for it. But later on, I loved, I absolutely loved it. Somebody asked, and we're going to get back to the two-point conversion thing, but somebody asked later on in the presser, well, Harbaugh, has any player, when, you, when it comes to going for it or being aggressive, has any player ever told you no, like they don't want to go for it? And he said no. So it's like with that, I, I know that whole, and I know the Ravens media like, look, Harbaugh, he's such a player's coach. He asked the players. It's all about the players. But for me, that, that, that just, that part, that didn't sit right with me when they were doing all that. Because it's like, yeah, he asked the players, but he asked the players knowing exactly what the players' response would be. He knew what their response, ain't nobody going to say no. What offensive player going to, nah, I don't, don't want to go for it, coach. Let's just play. No, they ain't going to do that. But anyway, when it, back to the two-point conversion plays. Did they cost the team a chance at the postseason? He said, you know how the players felt about it. He said, Lamar and Mark backed him. So he asked, or he, he, he talked about two of his best players on offense backing him. Because he, he like, hey, you know what? If they're going to disagree with me, they ain't going to disagree with Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews. <laughs> oh, no. You ain't going to disagree with them, are you? But anyway, uh, he, said he, feels the, he said he feels the worst about it. Uh, he asked, would we have won those games in overtime? We don't know. But he also didn't sound confident when he talked about uh, the quarterbacks that they would have gone up uh, in overtime. But check this out. He said if he could go back, he would have went to overtime. If he could go back, he would have went to overtime. <laughs> he had an opportunity to go back for several weeks, but he just kept going for two. So I don't know if he would change anything if he really went, went back. That's what he said, though. But anyway, uh, he said, we'll continue to be aggressive, but they won't be irresponsibly aggressive. Now, this is how a lot of us felt about Wink's defense, that they would be irresponsibly aggressive. And that is such a, a great way to put it. Uh, but this is how I felt about these two point conversions. I just I was not with him. But anyway. Um, he said, it isn't a mat deal. This is with Harbaugh. He, he be listening. Harbaugh, Harbaugh keeps his ears to the streets, man. Because he said, it isn't a matter of percentage chances. It's about making a decision in the heat of battle. And he said, it isn't about analytics. I was like, Ooh, okay, Harbaugh. Oh, you, you want to talk that talk, huh? Okay, let's get it, man. Uh, and then Jeff Zrebik said, uh, he said, so are you going to stop taking, are you, are you going to stop taking surveys? Like, are you going to start walking around to the different players and ask them, hey, do you want to go for it? Hey, do you want to go for it? And he said no. He said he's not going to stop that. Somebody else asked about the free, the free agents that they have coming up and how it presents such a challenge. Um, and he said, guys, they, they're going to go to the market and see how it goes. And he said usually he wants everybody back. Um, but they got to prioritize. prioritize. They got to look at the cap ramifications. They got to look at the draft. They got to look at possible cap cuts in the future and so on and so forth. So... That was, I mean, we, we all know that part. Um, about the offensive line, he said the offensive line is critically important. He said you win and lose in the trenches. Um, he said quarterback, he said quarterbacks are kind of important, but the offensive line, they're they important. <sighs> Not even going to say anything about that part. But anyway, uh, he talked about how Cleveland played well in the last game, Ben Cleveland that is. He said Powers played well when he played. He said uh, Villanueva, he said his best two games, I think, were the last two games of the season. Uh, I thought his best game was against the Chiefs. Uh, besides that, it was like that. But anyway, um, that he was asked about the lack of tackling. He said, was it a coaching thing or was it just a lack of fundamentals? And he said that a lot of things go into it. Uh, he said it got better towards the end, which it did and then it didn't. It was like still a little wishy-washy. But he said it starts. I, I did really love and appreciate this part. I, I loved it so much I didn't even write everything down. 
But he said it starts with understanding the basic angles. You got to understand gap control, edge control. He said it's not just about scheme, but it's about your relationship to the running back. And, and he just really was talking about players really understanding their assignments. Now, we know in Wink's defense was very complex, very detailed. So with Mike McDonald's, hopefully he can simplify some things to just make it easy on everybody. But anyway, um, he said uh, you have to ask yourself, are my eyes in the right place? And you have to have a comprehensive understanding of what you're doing. Uh, he talked about the understanding of recognizing screens. Uh, he brought out the Colts game, which we all remember that first drive for the Colts. Ravens stopped them. Then Ravens stopped them again on second down. Then there was third down. I remember. Y'all can go back and watch the live stream if you want to. I remember on that first third down, I remember calling out, watch the screen, watch the screen, watch the screen. Please watch the screen. What happened? Ravens brought pressure. Colts screened him. Touchdown. Like 74 yards. Anyway, um, he said it all starts with him as a coach. And he said that guys got to just understand the basics. I'm like, okay, Hobbs. Now, um, somebody else also asked, was there anything philo philosophical that you can do to stop all these young quarterbacks in the AFC? Because, yeah, you got some nice QBs in there. Ooh, he said uh, that's what they've been dealing with. Um, since they obviously in the AFC said in the end, it's about having some athletic fast guys that can get to the QB and chase them around. So you want to have some good pass rushers, uh, that can make some moves when it comes to that. Um, oh, then this was a good question too. Somebody asked, how concerned are you that you might be going against the grain with focusing on having a strong run game as opposed to a strong passing game? I love this question. I loved it. His response was, you have to build your team to the players you have. So that was him letting people know, like, hey, do we really have the players for a strong pass game? They do, but it doesn't seem as if Harbaugh believes that. Uh, and he said their passing game improved a lot this year, which it did. It did. It certainly did. We can't, cannot take that away from the offense, from Greg Roman, T. Martin, Keith Williams, Bobby Ingram, who's a tight end, we cannot take that away from them. The passing game did improve a lot this year, for sure. Um, what do you, somebody asks, how was the conversation with Jim when, he, when you called to get Mike McDonald back? Uh, he said Jim was like, sure, no problem. And he said it was a good experience for Mike in, in, in the way that it all worked out. So um, Now, they also ask, do you still think overtime is broken? Uh, and he said that actually in the Pro Bowl, they're going to do the whole little spot and choose thing. So we'll see how that goes. Now, last couple of questions. He said, um, we're facing Cincinnati two times a year. Um, as you construct your team, what do you think about the Bengals? And, and, and how does that relate as in how you will construct this, these Baltimore Ravens? And he said, you, you start with your division. He said Cincinnati is well built. They got a great QB, great, great wide receivers, great talent. And he said the defense is great, too. They got guys that can cover, a front that can stop the run. Of course, they got pass rush. They got all that stuff. And that's why they ended up in the Super Bowl. Uh, and he said the Bengals are the standard. Ooh. He gave that respect to the Bengals, as he should. Because right now, they are. The Bengals, when the last AFC North team that made the Super Bowl? It was, no, nah, it wasn't the Ravens in 2012, was it? Because I know Roethlisberger got two. Did he get both before 2000? No, he ain't get both before. I don't even remember when Roethlisberger got his Super Bowls. Man. Maybe he did get them both. Whoa, hold up now. Yeah. This may be the first AFC. Is, wow. I got a fact check on that. Because I'm trying to remember from 2012 to, 2000, to, to now, if there's been any other AFC North team that made the Super Bowl. I can't think of nobody. Because when did Steelers lose to the Packers? I don't even remember. But anyway, um... He said that Cincinnati is the standard, and yes, they, they are right now. They're in the Super Bowl. Nobody else is. Um, and he said that, that Pitt, Pittsburgh, they're still Pittsburgh, so you're still going to have to deal with them. And he said that the Browns, they are a talented team too, which they are. They get their quarterback situation figured out, whatever that's going to be, even with Baker Mayfield. They could still make a lot of noise, man. Uh, and he said they'll have to measure up scheme-wise and talent-wise. So now he said hell, coaches and players, so, which is true. Um, now, one of the biggest criticisms of the passing game uh, would be two guys being in the same area. 
What changes can we expect coming forward? That was the last question that he was asked. And he said, uh, there were some times where guys were doing the wrong thing. This is where it went all back to players. He said, Play, players, players, players. He said, sometimes guys will be doing the wrong thing. And he said it happened on some critical fourth downs. And he said they'll give the pass catcher, they give the pass catchers options. And he was like, and Lamar likes that, uh, depending on uh, what coverages the defenses, the defense that they're going up against are in. So sometimes if, if they got two safeties playing deep, uh, then the pass catchers have the option of stopping a little bit short and, and giving Lamar options a way to throw to him. He's like, oh, yeah, and Lamar likes that. I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, so, yeah, that was, uh, that was the presser. I, um, it was a lot. It was, it was a whole lot. Um, but I, I did appreciate it. It was finally nice to hear directly, not a statement. It was nice to hear directly uh, from Coach John Harbaugh. So Ravens are like, man, whew. We finally got it out the way. We're done. We need a break. Because originally the, the press conference for Mike McDonald was scheduled on Tuesday. But they were like, Harbaugh oh, was like, oh, I know this is about to be a lot. We need a break. So that press conference is now scheduled for Wednesday. And then they were like, oh, boy, we're probably going to need a break after this one. So Eric DeCostas is, again, is scheduled for Friday. So Monday, Wednesday, and Friday are the days of the Ravens press conferences. I appreciate y'all watching. I know it was a lot, but... We had a lot to cover, and John Harbaugh had a lot to say, and we had a lot to say as well. I love y'all so much, team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. And just like Giro, it's not going to be, at least for now, because, again, I, I just really did not get the vibe that Giro is a lock. I did not get the vibe that he's safe. I did not get the vibe that he is not going to be held accountable, but we'll see what they do moving forward. I love you. Y'all have a great day with whatever you're doing. Y'all stay up. We out.